Hello everyone. Good morning and on to another video. I grabbed a bunch of these um, little boxes. There's this tub here. Oops. It's got some goodies in. This one, um, a couple of trays and these bracelets were on, hang on, let me grab it. Well, on this thing, I don't know if I remember seeing it in one of the, the silver tub. And I'm going to try and get through this lot today and hopefully I've got another bag here too that's got a bunch of things in. Maybe that one too. So we'll try and keep it under 20 minutes. Let's get right into it. This is video number seven. So this is the bracelets that were on that. And this is the tub that she said was primarily silver jewelry. So it's probably going to be a lot of silver as we go through. Of course it has to tangle. So this one here looks very obviously sterling silver. And I think it... It looks to me like it might be horn. I can't see a sterling mark on it, but it's definitely sterling silver bracelet. A couple of tubs to sort things into. This is sterling silver too. A little vintage clamper bracelet. Very simple one. This is marked silver too on the back. Just a little Italian um, braided bracelet now this one doesn't look silver no it's just a costume one I think this lady really didn't know how to tell the difference between jewelry this is really nice it's marked silver 95 Italy and it's a charm bracelet with lots of little charms some really cute different ones little dragon butterfly little Egyptian head that's lovely in our silver tub. There's another sterling silver bracelet, Mark 925. And this one has little gemstone hearts and other hearts. There's another. This one's actually really sweet. It's really lightweight. It'd be nice for like a teenager because the charms aren't heavy. So lots of little teeny charms. Also Mark Sterling on that little part there. This one's nice. It's marked sterling here on this part of the um, clasp, 25. Oh, it's a bit tangled, but I'm not going to untangle it. It's like a panel bracelet. So they were the ones that were on that long thing. Well, let's get into this tub. She had quite a few little containers, and I'm going to try and sort them all the way through. This is lovely. This is like a cameo pendant and earrings. I'm only getting it out because I want to feel what it is. It feels like glass to me and this panel feels like lucite on glass. And then there is a matching pair of earrings. That's lovely. I'll put it back in its baggie after. This is another lucite cameo. So it's plastic. You can tell the difference between this shell and a lucite. An empty baggie. There's some more little cameos in here. The lucite ones. This is pretty. This is what I love about the treasure of this lot is that there are pieces that are really lovely mixed in with pieces that are more junky. This is beautiful. This is a shell cameo in sterling silver and it's a pendant and it's so lovely. It's just different. You see a lot of that side profile of the face. But that one's really, really pretty. Actually, I'm going to put her in a baggie so she doesn't break. What's this one here? India, it says. It's a little enamel one. Oh, and it's hallmarked on the back. So that's silver too. There's a whole bunch of charms in this bag. They all look sterling to me. Oh, yep. Oh, it's bumping. Stop wobbling. This is kind of cool. It's like an African face. Sorry, the camera's wobbling. I gave it a good bump. It does have sterling silver there and then a maker mark there. A-N-D-I-D-A, -D -D -A, maybe. But these are all sterling pieces. And then the last piece in here is just a little costume pendant with a romantic scene. So that's it for that container. I'm trying to condense because there's so many pieces here that are in, like this, in containers, but there's not many pieces. Let's have a look in this one. Ooh. 
First off, we've got a sterling silver ring. Excuse my dry hands. My husband keeps telling me, put hand cream on your hands. I'm terrible. <laughs> but I don't think about it until I'm already filming and then I can see how dry my hands are. 925. And this one has Mother of Pearl in the middle. We actually watched, or my husband watched the video back on our TV last night. And with it being really huge, it's even more obvious that I have gross dry hands at the moment. So he's like, eh. This is a little Timex vintage watch. I don't know anything about watches, so I always give those to hubby to look at. A rock. My son will like that. There's another watch. This is EKB. I don't know anything. Like I said, nothing about watches, so I can't do anything about it. I'll give that to my husband and he can have a look. It does have a cracked face, though. A few more baggies. There is... Oh, this is lovely. This sterling looks like a child's bracelet. An early one. That's really pretty. Then there are rings in here. This one's got like little opals and cubic zirconias, but there is one missing. And that's stamp 925, but there is a stone missing. So that'll get scrapped at some point. This one's Mark Sterling and it's got little pink cubic zirconias. This one's quite an old one. Oh, I've gone and bumped it again. Darn it with bumping the camera today. This one's sterling silver with little stones. It's got kind of a high set, probably 1970s. There's this piece which is more modern, likely with cubic zirconias. Sterling silver ring. Mm, this watch is pretty, I think. If it was sterling with marker side, it'd be much nicer. It's just a costume one with, with um, marker sides, but still very pretty. I can make out the maker's name if anyone knows anything about watches. Can't really see it on the back, but I will get happy to look that up too. What else is in here? Five cents! Now it only cost me $2,499.95. Oh, this is lovely. This one's selling silver. And it has three little opals in it. That's pretty. There's another little sterling silver one. Mark 95. So quite a few rings in this little box. Oh, and then it looks like one big long earring, which is Mark 95 as well. It's a really long earring with a pearl at the bottom. Hopefully we'll find a match to that because that's a very, very pretty earring. But we will, um, and then this, I will keep these beads because I don't know what they're from. Looks like some coral beads. Because I will probably do some bead bags when I get around to selling this stuff. So yeah, that's all that was in that box. I can get rid of some of these boxes. Then I've got these two trays, which just says mixture. Okay, let's see what's in here. Um, pendant. It doesn't look sterling to me. But I will get hubby to look closer at it with a loop. These look like they're sterling. A little Egyptian pendant and a little house pendant. Okay, um, charm. Oh, that's the silver. And it opens up. Oh, like a little temple. That's cute. If I don't know they're definitely silver, I'll separate them. Hubby can sort them out. This one is a pendant and chain. I'm not going to unwrap it, it'll slow us down. Mark 925. Shall I put them all together and he can go through them all? Love you, darling. <laughs> That's your job. Oh, this is beautiful. It's a little silver elephant. And his little trunk up. And he, he's got enamel eyes. I love his ears. They're so cute. Very sweet, that is. And then there is a, ch a piano charm. Sterling silver. It's got really nice detail, this one. The vintage charms do, the more modern ones, they just make them so mass produced. But this has got really nice detail on it. Nice for someone who's a pianist. And then this, I think, is yeah, sterling silver as well. Rhinestone pendant. That even looks like rose cut diamonds. Like the way that they're cut, I don't know if you can see these stones. See how they're flat on the top? This is called rose cut. And they were hand cut with like a um, file. 
So I'm going to check that for diamonds because they are very, very, like to be hand cut like that being cubic zirconias. Because this, I can't see a stamp, but it could very well be platinum. I will keep that aside and get hubby to test it straight after I've finished. So then I can put in the comments what I find out about that pendant. Next one is just another mix lot. We're doing okay for time. We should be able to get onto that other bag. There's just a little vintage looks costume, but I'll get hubby to look closer. A little locket pendant. This is lovely. It's another um, gold filled locket. Oh, it's got pictures. Aww. Someone's mummy or grandma. That's actually really lovely. I love this design on the front. Very Victorian. There's I'm about to get things out of these sections. A little vintage book locket, which has seen better days. It's a bit faded. I'll probably put that into a, a lot. This locket's lovely. It's enamel. It's very cool. Actually, that's really pretty. Pieces I would sell individually because I think they're really lovely. A sterling silver locket that's engraved. Opens up. I like to open them up because I want to see if they've got pictures. So it says 925 in there. So this is likely a more modern reproduction because it's got 925 instead of SIL or silver or sterling, SDER for sterling. Another engraved locket. Now this one looks older. Very cute. And another locket. It's got a lovely um, turquoise panel on the front, this one. That's lovely too. So some nice bits of sterling. I will end up keeping these probably for sorting, but for now we'll take all the pieces out. Let's get into this bag then, since we've got some more time. Maybe I shouldn't tip it on here because there's gaps in the wood. Yeah, let's just try and see how we go. This doesn't have any marks for silver on it. It's just a necklace that you clip on. Tubby can check it. Got a very large fake Tiffany and Co necklace. Well, I believe it's fake. I think that it's um, not quality enough to be real. That hubby would check it. The chain definitely doesn't look real. The links are all open, they're not soldered. What's this piece here? This looks like it's just costume. Big necklace. The lady did say to me that she wasn't very good at identifying what was silver and what wasn't, but that's still a really, really nice necklace. It's very pretty. Oh, so many necklaces. Oh, let's try and get ones that aren't tangled for starters. This one is a sterling silver necklace with a pendant. I'm not going to grab that out because I think this is going to be a big tangled mishmash. So I'll try and grab some bigger pieces out. This one's definitely sterling. It's got a um, like an amethyst crystal in it. Big necklace, but modern. I find if you get the bigger bits out first, they're kind of what holds the tangle together. This is not silver at all. It's 1950s. Uh, it's actually marked Japan on the hook. 1950s lucite necklace. Very pretty still. This is marked sterling. Let's see if I can get it out. Really big chunky necklace. Excuse if it's um, a bit fiddly me doing it this way. Big chunky one. That's good. Oh. This has um, got a little religious pendant. The religious pendant isn't silver. But the chain is, it's got the little hang tag there for sterling silver, so a silver chain. Hmm. I might have to do this tangling off camera if it gets, takes too long. This is lovely. It's a really interesting pendant with some, looks like amber. I like that actually, on a silver chain. 
So there's certainly nice pieces in here. Just seeing how easy it is to untangle. If there's two that's hard to get apart, this is just a little fake equip one, but it is tangled on this sterling silver one with a heart with enamel marked Mexico. That's lovely. So I will untangle them after because we may be here for a while if I try and untangle them all. This one's lovely. It's got like amethyst crystals on a chain. It's a tinsy bit tangled. But we will persist on a silver chain. Very lovely. Yes, I don't think I thought this very well undoing necklaces. If there's a load of tangled necklaces again, I might go through them and then just lay them out and take the camera over. This is nice. It's a fob one. It's marked here, Sterling. And this would be like for a fob watch. But people wear them, just tend to join them like that and wear them as necklaces now. So it's a really old one. Nice chain. We got a rhinestone, 1950s rhinestone, not sterling silver, but just rhinestone necklace. Another sterling chain with a teensy wincy locket. It's likely an old one. And all these chains add up. Like that's not a... Um, a silver pen it's just a little crystal but it's on a silver chain hang on can i pause for one second sorry about that i'm back let's keep going well i had it paused i probably should have untangled some things that would have been helpful this is a angus and coot sterling silver chain a sterling pendant This one's nice. I think the good thing, one of the good things about going through it like this with everybody is that it gives me a record of what I've got as well. Because every single piece of this collection will be on video. Not touch wood that I never ever get robbed. But it's good to have a, um, a video of the pieces that I had. I think we might going to have to do highlights of this lot because it's or I'll pause, I'll untangle, and I'll come back. Okay, I gave up. <laughs> it's taking me so long. I'm just going to show you this bunch. I can't do it standing here. It's going to take so long. This is sterling silver. These are all sterling silver chains, different pendants. This is actually a really big double one, and it's so tangled. I'll be standing here for like half an hour if I try and do it. So a whole bunch of sterling silver necklaces. This one's pretty with a little purple stone in the front. And it looks like some marcasites that have fallen out. An anklet. I need to have more patience, but not standing right here, no. Another sterling silver necklace. Another sterling chain. Uh, this little pendant isn't sterling, but it's got a really nice Marbe pearl. It's very pretty. And it looks like we have a single earring. I don't think that's sterling. And we have one more bag to go. That's why I didn't want to stand there forever untangling. And hopefully these will be less tangled because they're larger. This is very nice. It's a very large chain with a locket. Very pretty. It's the kind of pieces I'll probably keep out to wear myself. This stuff needs such a good clean. I'm hoping to um, have items listed up in my eBay store. For those that don't know, I'm starting an eBay store from July 1st and I won't be starting with listing this stuff. I'll be starting with listing stuff that I've collected um, over the last few months. In, out op shopping and swap meeting and that. Likely start with brooches and some costume. There's some sterling. That's, I'm just going to be. They're all sterling silver, so I'll just show you the different chains as I'm talking. And um, yeah, start with some brooches and a bit of this and a bit of that. You get 40 free listings um, a month when you first start. So until I'm feeling better, I'll probably just start with that 40 free listings this month. That's actually really lovely. It's got an opal. Sorry, I had to stop talking to talk about that one. It does have a maker's mark here on the back, which I will look at. But I had to stop because that's very pretty. 
Um, so I will link in the description here my eBay store just so that you can go on and start following. And then when the pieces land, I'm going to be doing, hopefully be able to um, offer international posts as well. But honestly, it's really expensive to post from um, Perth to the, or Australia to the US. Like, because with PayPal, you have to be able to provide tracking. And I think the cheapest way with tracking is like 17 or $18, which is a bit ridiculous. So I'm going to go on a few forums and see if I can find a cheaper way to post internationally. But the only good thing is, is that even with my posts within Australia, uh, if you get multiple pieces and they fit in a, um, this is lovely with lapis, and they fit in a 500 gram satchel, then I can combine posts too. So I'll likely do a, um, like a maximum post of $9 within Australia if it's just standard post. And then you can, f as many pieces as you purchase for $9, but we'll see. I've got lots of videos I want to do about eBay and talking about all my experience over the years and with selling like personal stuff and um, the way that I price my items. That's actually really pretty little flower, but I won't do that in this video. I will do one likely um, talking before I start listing. So this weekend, another selling chain, I will do that because I'd like to get at least 10 or 15 items up this weekend in my eBay store so there's something to start. So I might do these videos up until Friday and then on the weekend, Saturday do a, um, or Sunday do a video about um, eBay and how I price. Because there's lots of different ways to price on eBay that um, I can teach you about different ways. So there's basically like you, whether you want to price low to sell fast and have your items turning over, or you can do um, look up comps and put yours on the market at the same price as everyone else's and then maybe wait a couple of weeks to a couple of months for it to sell, or you can do long hold, which is what I've done every time I've sold stuff on eBay, even if it's, um, even if, you know, when it's been my personal items. Sorry, these are all tangled. I'm just gonna try and show you them. There's one here with a horsey, there's a butterfly with power shell, and then there's another pendant here that's got a garnet. So that's it for the haul today. But like I was saying, with long hold is basically um, listing it for a higher price and then just waiting for your buyer. So that tends to be how I do it with um, higher price with best offer. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. Thank you so much for watching the video today. This box had quite a bit of silver. I'll probably do maybe some brooches in the next video tomorrow. Thank you again so much for watching and for following along. I'll give you any updates on when hubby tests this and things we find out. Please keep an eye out in the um, description. And um, see you in the next video. Bye.